Hi everyone. At this point in your understanding of Newman projections, hopefully you are comfortable going from a wedge dash drawing to a Newman projection showing either a staggered confirmation or an eclipsed confirmation. And if you practice with your molecular models, you are able to view a molecule like ethane from the side and then turn it so you are looking down the CC bond. In this video, we will answer this problem concerning Newman projections. Draw the Newman projection energy diagram for butane. Looking down the C2, C3 bond, start with a Newman projection that has the highest energy, or otherwise known as the least stable conformation. For this problem, you want to first draw butane. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Let me draw it um, up here. I'm going to draw it zigzag, and what I want to do is I want to figure out my point of view down the C2, C3 bond. So when we number this butane, we have one, two, three, four, and to look down to 2, 3 bond, I'm going to put my eyeball where this stick figure is. Very excited. This is the first time, I hope you could tell, first time I've used an orange pen. I got the deluxe model, the del deluxe set right there. Now, the way I drew it, zigzag, makes it look staggered from their point of view. But I like to start at the eclipse confirmation because it's asking for the highest energy. And we know that every eclipse confirmation is higher in energy than any staggered. So set your templates first. That's what I would do. A template for your Newman projections is a dot. Oh, maybe that was a little bit too high. Let's see how this works. And a circle. And I want Eclipse. Eclipse will have the highest energy. And don't worry about what's attached to the bonds yet. So let me draw the templates. OK, not the prettiest. Before I start putting atoms on the bonds, well, I got to know what groups are attached to the front carbon and the back carbon, right? You know this dot as the front and this circle here as the back carbon. Oh, don't go too far. OK, let me draw the wedge dash drawing for the least stable conformation. The wedge dash drawing would be this. You have your two carbons. And I'm going to put the bonds in the plane both up, eclipse, they're right on top of each other. And we have wedge, wedge, and dash. You're trying to mimic the tetrahedral shape. Okay. And where is C2 and C3? C2 is here, and C3 is here. Well, the most unstable conformation would have the two methyl groups eclipsing each other, and the smaller hydrogens on the other positions. Let's draw our stick figure. Again, orange guy or girl. And we have this. So what I'm going to put on this template is what the orange person sees. But before I do that, why is this the least stable? Pop quiz. What strains does this confirmation have? Here's the answer. There are two types of strains experienced by this eclipse confirmation. Steric strain or bumping strain, where you have bumping, literally, if you make the model, the hydrogens of these two carbons are going to be touching or close to touching. That's as close as you can get 
these two methyl groups to be when it is eclipsed and those two are eclipsing each other. But also you have torsional strain. Torsional strain is not a bumping strain. It is actually a strain due to the repulsion of light charges. So we have electrons in the bonds. So there's a repulsion of those electrons. And these two bonds are as close as they'll ever get when it's in the eclipse conformation. Unstable situation. Now I just have to copy. And I pers pers purposefully drew the bonds straight up to do the upside down Y. Upside down Y. Because that's the stem. The two methyl groups are the stem of the Y, but they're upside down. Now, a preference that I like is I don't want the letters to literally overlap. So I made it H3C and CH3. Another uh, preference, and I think it's very important, is that your bond goes to the C. I know it's a methyl group, and a lot of people just write CH3 in the middle of this bond. Make the bond go to the carbon. Everything else, literally, one, two, three, four hydrogens are these other bonds. Okay, now that is the highest, um, highest energy or the least stable. So they have a dot, or they have a dot here already. What is this 60? This 60 means that we are going to rotate one of the carbon 60 degrees. It looks like from my templates that I'm keeping the front carbon perfectly still and I'm rotating the back clockwise. So I want to rotate this methyl group 60 degrees this way to get to this second conformation. Well, that would put the methyl group here. And again, the front carbon stays the same. So the front carbon has these three bonds the fourth bond is to the carbon to the back right but the dot we see it has three bonds um, shaped like an upside down y and then we have these hydrogens okay we're going to name these at the end staggered and eclipsed what i want to mention now at this point though is what is the 60 degrees the 60 degrees is not a bond angle a bond angle is defined by three atoms right like water has a bond angle because it's defined by the HOH uh, atoms. But this 60 degrees means that the C, 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 C dihedral angles, or also known as torsional angles, are defined by four atoms. That equals 60 degrees. So you could see that you rotate the back carbon 60 degrees, but it's actually, uh, you could think of it as like two planes. Actually, I'm in a hotel right now, so I do have these uh, cards. So if you have a card like this, two planes, and another plane like this, and you rotate the front one 60 degrees, that's what's happening. Okay, And actually, we're rotating the back one. So the back one rotates like that. Okay, Getting the methyl group from the 12 o'clock to the 2 o'clock. I'm in Savannah. I'm going to help my cousin move uh, into her dorm at SCAD. Very exciting. She's a great artist. Better artist than this. This is horrific. Which mother group are we rotating? We're rotating this one, another 60 degrees. So do you notice that methyl group now is eclipsing this hydrogen? Now, ah, messed up. See, I drew, I, I drew it on the wrong bond. It's not the bond to the dot, it's the bond to the circle. Hmm. CH3. You know what? To avoid that mistake, let's draw the front carbon right away for all the templates. That's probably the best thing to do. Okay, because the front carbon stays the same. Now we're rotating the back. And why don't we, you know, we can mark, well, it's the methyl group, but let's mark it with a circle. Go 60 degrees. Go another 60 degrees. Okay, so we're close to the 6 o'clock position. Because if we move this another 60 degrees, we have the methyl group over here. Another staggered position. And let's circle that. 
Okie dokie. Now we're going to give these confirmations names. Uh, let's use... Do I have any other cool colors from my set? The first one is Eclipsed. That's brown. The next one is Staggered for sure. The next one is Eclipsed. And this one's Staggered. But this molecule has a unique feature where the two eclipses are low in uh, high in energy, but they're different in energy. One's more higher than the other. This is the worst, the highest energy. This is the second highest energy. Do you know why? Well, we already mentioned that we have steric strain and torsional strain for this first confirmation that we set at zero degrees. The dihedral angle for the CCCC is zero. Well, what about this eclipse? Do you notice that the methyl groups are kind of far apart? So really, the main strain here is not bumping strain, but it's torsional. See, that's a small hydrogen. So we're not going to get much bumping strain or steric strain. This will have uh, torsional strain, purple, only. See the difference? This eclipse has torsional and steric. This one only has torsional. What about this two staggereds? Which one of these two is the more stable? It's these two. The methyl groups are very far apart. That's called staggered anti. So this does have a special name. The eclipses don't have special names Okay, for the two different eclipses. This is staggered what's called gauche. French uh, for left, lefty. And so why is this a little bit higher in energy than the staggered anti? Because we don't have torsional strain, but we do have steric strain. Okay, It's not bad. It's not as bad as that steric strain here, right? I'm drawing like two half spheres hitting each other. It's, it's a little bit further apart because they're not eclipsed, but still there is a little bit steric strain. This one has none. Okay. Now, think about what that means for the energy diagram. We'll do this in the dots in blue. So I'll make this dot bigger. Highest in energy. Well, what is this? This is lower in energy than the dot, but higher than this. Why don't we set the lowest energy, the most stable, as low as possible without going to the axis? So we're down here. Let's call this the most stable or the lowest energy. It's the staggered anti. Um, most stable. This dot on the graph has to be higher than this, but definitely lower than the eclipse. So I'm going to put it right, let, let me put it right here. Is that too high? <clears throat> Uh, let's put it like right there, okay? Right there. Higher than that, but obviously lower than this because staggered is always lower in energy or more stable than eclipsed. So what about, ooh, I didn't finish the H's here. H and H. What about this eclipsed? It's not as bad as that, so it's not as high as this dot. Let us put it right uh, here at 120. Okay, 120 di dihedral there. So we have a hierarchy, right? The most stable, the second most stable, the third most stable, and the fourth most or the least stable. And then what you want to do is you want to draw a ski slope. You start out with a, a plateau and then you drop and then you flatten out again. You plateau. You rise rapidly, and then you plateau. And then here you plateau, and then you hit the valley. If you're doing this on a exam, and they don't give you the lines, you got to make sure that your grader knows that this dot here is at a different energy level than this other eclipse here. And then this staggered is a little bit higher than the staggered. Okay, 
this energy diagram, where you have two different staggers and two different eclipses, that is for benzene. Oh, benzene. That is for butane. Okay. And again, your stick figure is looking down the two middle carbons like this. What are some other molecules that could potentially have the same shape as butane? Well, you could have something like OH groups, alcohol. And we have this. Okay. And again, look down the two middle carbons. We only have two carbons in this case. Down like that. The front carbon and the back. Should I label that? Front and the back. But do not memorize. Do not memorize the height of the hill or the depth of the valley. Look at each molecule on a case-by-case -case basis. Because what about what about this molecule here? What if we just had this molecule? Ethanol. Okay, it's almost like this with the two OH groups, and we could definitely have, right, an eclipse where these two are, are on top of each other. But over here, we have three hydrogens on this carbon, on the front carbon. I like to always draw the stick figure to remind myself, what am I looking down? So that Y at the front only has three hydrogens. Do you think if you drew out the energy diagram from 0 to 180 degrees, it would have this shape? Or would the two eclipses be equal and the two staggers be equal? You will want to do that on your own. Let me give you a last molecule that's challenge, maybe. Draw the energy diagram from 0 to 60 to 120 to 180 degrees for this molecule. Looking down the same two middle carbons. So, you know, the professor on the exam, if there are multiple carbon carbon bonds, they would have to specify which carbon carbon bond to look down at. Um, so, actually, when you name this molecule, this is carbon number one, actually. This is two. So, you're looking down the two one carbon. Okay, again, don't try to memorize. Do it on a case-by-case -case basis, and the trick is start with the least stable eclipse and make it the high point. So if there are any um, last-second tips to give you, start with the least stable eclipse. Right? And that will be your um, zero degree dihedral angle. And you could hold maybe the front carbon the same and rotate the back. But also, another good tip is draw your, draw your four templates first without any atoms. Draw the four so you don't confuse yourself. Start out with something that you could do almost automatically for every single energy, energy diagram. Every single energy diagram, um, if you have this axis, will have four Newman projections. Eclipse, staggered, eclipse, staggered. Draw the four templates for the Newman projections first. you are going to test yourself with uh, these two. See if they, are, they give different shapes of the energy diagram.